Hey guys, I'm Kalilo Reynolds, and it's now time for Money Mondays JA, brought to you in partnership with Proven Wealth. Well, a couple of weeks ago, I gave you a heads up about Mailpack's upcoming IPO. Well, the prospectus is now out, and I'm here to break it on down. Now, let's start with the key information. They're selling 20% of the company, that's 500 million shares, for just $1 a share. There's a special price of 90 cents for employees. The offer opens on November 22 and is scheduled to close on December 6. However, I warn you, this one is likely to open and close very quickly. That's because only 150 million shares are open to the public in the general pool. And based on the share price and the positive reviews I'm already seeing, this one will go fast. The minimum subscription is 10,000 shares, so you can buy into this company for just 10,000 Jamaican dollars, plus a small processing fee of $163. So that's about 71 US dollars total for those of you living abroad. A bit more information about this company now. Mailpack Group Limited is a brand new company. They were only incorporated less than two months ago. I know, I know, you've been hearing about Mailpack or even using it for years. Well, the new company is actually a merger of two companies. There's Mailpack Services Limited and Mailpack Local Limited. Mailpack Services is the one that you use to shop online from like Amazon and eBay. And they give you a Miami-based shipping address, you bring your items to the country and they clear customs for you, all that good stuff. While Mailpack Local allows you to shop online locally from companies including Pricemart and Hilo, and they deliver to your door. Now, both Mailpack Services and Mailpack Local are owned by Norbrook Equity Partners, led by Carrie Robinson, which has pumped some $263 million into their development and improvements in technology. Mailpack claims to be the largest e-commerce and logistics company in Jamaica with some 50,000 customers island-wide. However, one of the things I was looking for in this prospectus was their actual market share, but that data wasn't available. Because if you watched my previous video on Mailpack, one of my concerns was the vast amount of competition in this sector. Every day a new competitor is popping up offering lower and lower fees and promising to deliver your items very quickly. As a matter of fact, Mailpack says that when they first started, they were, there were six companies offering this service in Jamaica and now there are 60, like six zero. Now on the last video, I also asked you guys who've used Mailpack before for feedback on their service. The consensus was that they offer very good service, such as their free returns policy, but they're a little on the pricey side. They'll surely, uh, they're surely more expensive than their competitors, but their customers seem very loyal based on the comments and don't mind, don't mind paying a little bit extra for quality service. And this is evidenced in their continued growth. They've continued to gain new customers, even in the face of more competition. In fact, they made a point in the prospectus that they see competition as being good for the industry because it actually raises awareness about the benefits of online shopping, leading to a much larger customer base. They even compared it to what they called the KFC effect. Now, back in the day when KFC first opened up in Jamaica, dining out wasn't a huge thing, but now there are literally thousands of competing restaurants but KFC has continued to grow simply because of their quality product and services. I thought that was a pretty interesting point. So let's look at their numbers now. According to the prospectus, Mailpack grew at a rate of about 5% a year between 2013 and 2016, at a time when there were only about half the competitors there are today. By 2018, last year, growth had jumped to 25%, and the first half of this year, growth is now nearly 30%. In terms of revenues, for the nine months ended September 30, they're at $851 million. They expect to make another $342 million in the fourth quarter, which includes Christmas, Black Friday, and Cyber Monday. So that's their busiest period that's coming up. And that would bring the full year's revenues to nearly $1.2 billion 
compared to 969 million last year. Net profits now, they're at 203 million up to the end of September. They're expecting another $79 million between September and December for a total of 282 million for this year. For 2019, compared to 213 million last year. So this company is growing very rapidly. They're rather profitable, and the projection for the next five years is for this to steadily increase, for this to continue. They're projecting that total revenues will move from $1.2 billion this year to $2 billion by 2024. That's growth of 66%, and profits, they believe, will almost double from 282 million to 555 million. And your share of those profits, the dividends, would be 75%. They intend to pay out up to 75% of their net profits to shareholders in dividends, and that's not counting the possible appreciation in share price. So you buy today at a dollar a share, who knows what the share price will actually be worth in five years with this kind of growth. But I do believe that developments in the industry and in the Jamaican economy are creating more favorable conditions for online shopping. JMMB is launching a new Visa debit card, which I'm telling you more about later on this week, so stay tuned. And Western Union's new partnership with Amazon, which I told you about on Taking Stock last week, as well as other developments. Now, according to MailPack, right now, only about 4 to 6% of Jamaican adults, or about 100,000 people, are shopping online. If this grows to even 25% and maintains market share, MailPack's revenue will balloon to $30 billion. Now, keep in mind, the U.S. has about 75% of their adult population shopping online, so we still wouldn't even be touching their rates, but there's just so much room for growth in Jamaica, even with competition. Mailpack says they wanna be the Amazon of Jamaica, and they see great potential for Mailpack local as well, as more Jamaican companies start selling online. Now, there are some risks that I must tell you about because they're basing their projections on a number of assumptions. One, that inflation remains in single digits. The Bank of Jamaica has been doing a lot of work to keep inflation below 6%. They've been successful for the past two years or so. And then two, they're assuming that GCT remains the same. For the past two years, the government has actually been lowering taxes and elections are coming up, so I have my eye on what they're gonna be doing with GCT. Three, the exchange rate remains in line with their projections. That's another assumption. So this is a tricky one, especially since they didn't say what their projections actually are for the dollar. But right now, the Jamaican dollar is at its weakest point, 142 to 1 US. So those are some of the major ones, major risk uh, factors to look at. Now, remember, I'm not a licensed financial advisor, so don't take, take anything I've said as advice. That's it for this episode of Money Mondays JA, brought to you by Proven Wealth. And shout out to the guys at iCreate Studios as well, where this video was shot. Coming up on Taking Stock Later, we're talking to Digicel and Flo. You guys have been complaining about crappy service, which seems to have just gotten worse in the past few months. So they're here to face the music. And then the analysts weigh in on MailPack and some of the other offers that are out right now. Which one should you choose? And it's earnings season, so a lot of companies' results are out. They'll break it down for us. Thanks for watching. I'm Kalila Reynolds. Follow me on Instagram at Kalila Ray and subscribe to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Ray. Share this video, comment below. See you later.